So we are starting a brand new live. Okay, so we're in the we're still at the National Museum West, and this is Zoe. No, no, that is Zoe. Yeah, <laughs> on the camera uh, it is Zoe. Okay, that is Sexy Man. That's right. This I'm is Zoe. Here. This is Sexy Man. Thank I know how to point. All right. All right. So, um, so we are we've moved from upstairs where the uh, the sculpture Art of Jamaican sculpture exhibition was. And we're now downstairs at the Rasta exhibition. Rastafarian, Rastafarian exhibition? Rastafari. Rastafari. See, you tell me the wrong thing. <laughs> Rastafari exhibition. So this is one that you're definitely going to want to see what is going on in here because I see video, I see poster boards. Um, I see a whole lot of stuff that Zoe is going to talk to us more about. So I'm gonna flip the camera again. You can't really see me anyway because it's Zoe. dark in here. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera and Zoe is now going to tell you about all this cool stuff that's on the wall. Rastafari, what is this? Rastafari, I think we went like. Yes, you have so to welcome, talk loud to you. Right. So okay. welcome to our Rastafari exhibit. We're going to catch the Rastafari and it's in the Karas that don't believe in ism and No ism and schism. No ism and schism. It's not Rastafari either because they're not a country, so Rastafari. Rastafari, yes. So Rastafari, the movement, was started in the 1930s when our first national hero sent looked to Africa for the next black king. And shortly after that, Haile Selassie was crowned king of kings in Ethiopia, fulfilling his religion. Mm -hmm. Now, it is not just a religion for the Rastafari. Right? They call it a liberty. So it's more of a lifestyle than anything else where they practice daily meditations and chants, they pray, they read the Bible, things that keep them mindful of their relationship between the individual and the Almighty. Okay. It is steeped in fragments of African tradition and also biblical prophecy. The Rastafari movement also largely believe in repatriation, meaning they hope to one day return to their ancestral home, and that is Africa. And that was again held when Marcus Garvey had his fleet of ships called the Black Star Line. He said that anybody who wanted to repatriate would just come and he would take them freely back to Africa. Nice. So thank you to Kay Booth Wilson who is saying hello from Teaneck, New Jersey. Kay, please hit share on this video because we're learning about the history of Rastafari. I don't think Marcus Garvey was actually a Rastafari. Mm -hmm. So what is that person who is Rastafari? That's a Rast. I don't think, I don't think <laughs> Marcus Garvey was a Rast, but he was pertinent yeah, to he, read Patricia. His philosophy is inspired a lot of the movement. Very nice. Okay, um, who, who's this guy? So these two are the very first Rastas here on the island. This is Leonard Powell and this is Josie Nathaniel Gibbert. They preached that the oppression the Rastafari movement had faced were similar to what the slaves in the band had also faced. And also that Haile Selassie was a true invisible god embodied because his lineage could be traced back straight to the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon. Mm. Okay, so this is Ethiopianism and Black Liberation. And these guys I'm fascinated with because you're saying that these were the first two Rastas yeah. in Jamaica. Were there Rastas before them at all? They started the movement. Yeah, they are not planning on this planning. Mm -hmm. They look so proper, not well. I shouldn't say proper because Rasta is not improper, but they look so, you know, um, what we call, what they call clean cut. Yeah. Um, I think Rasta is is a proper, you know, not a religion, a proper lifestyle and a proper movement. Mm -hmm. But this is just like diametrically opposite to <laughs> to what you typically think of as Rasta. Rasta. Who is this gentleman here? This Patriarch. Joseph Nathaniel Hibbert. Joseph Nathaniel Hibbert. So he's the same guy from over here. Okay. Yeah. And he is. What's his relevance? He was a teacher of the Rastafari. Okay. One of the first. Ones. Very nice. With this one? Yes. These are the other guys. How well which is him? Mm -hmm. Um, Hines and Dongle. Okay. We're the original teachers of the Rastafari movement. Here is Mr. Marcus Garvey along with some information on him. So you're seeing all of this in 3D, of course. The stories are on the walls. And you're seeing these great images on the walls as well. David is standing in front of this beautiful map of Africa that also tells a story. We're not getting into every single detail. If you want to read it all, you need to come down here and look at it. 
but we're gonna keep going through to look at Mr. Marcus Garvey. So this is Marcus Garvey, Pan-Africanist, first national hero of um, Ireland, and the founder of the Universal Negro Improvement Association. What is a Pan-Africanist? Um, it is just um, the whole mindset of going back to Africa. Okay. Um, yeah, so he was the founder of the Universal Negro Improvement Association. Um, he's what the Rastafari view as a prophet mm -hmm. because of his predictions about Haile Selassie becoming king of kings. But he himself was not a Rastafari. He was, in fact, Roman Catholic until he died in 1940. Okay. Um, you said something a while ago that I want to ask you about and I forgot what it was already. Um, thank you, Diane w Johnson, who is watching from the UK. She says she has shared this post and it's very informative. Um, what was the last thing that you said a while ago? You said um, something and I wanted to that ask That he was in um, um, He was Roman Catholic. No, man, before that. I don't remember. All right. If I remember, I will ask you again. What are all of these pieces of wood doing on the ground? Oh, these are coconut and kids love them every time they come on tour and they just sit here. Oh, so these are just for ambience, it's not part of the exhibit. Okay. All right. Are we going to come back over here or can I just show them this really quickly? I don't know if you're going to see it because of the amount of um, light in the background, but here are just some little, they almost look like album covers, um, but these little graphics showing images of Rasta and oh, Haile Selassie. Oh, the whole King of Kings thing. That's what I wanted to ask you about. Um, you said he predicted that Selassie would become King of Kings. Who pronounced Selassie King of Kings? The Ethiopian dynasty. He belonged, his family was royalty before he originally became King of Kings because his father was also um, king before he was. And what does King of Kings mean? That he was the head of the country at that time. So it was kind of like a monarchy back then. So wasn't every, so every generation had a king of all kings or he was the first one to be pronounced that? No, I don't think he was. Okay, all right. Um, I don't quite understand the whole thing, but I got you, all right. Yeah, it's complicated, it's a lot of information. And right. I don't want to, you know, overload it, I don't remember. Right. Uh, so this is the Bad Friday incident, which happened in 1963. Bad Friday, I like that. I'm going to name an album, Bad Friday. David, when I record my album, it's to be called Bad Friday. Bad Friday, yeah, man. yes. Okay, what's Bad Friday now? So this incident that took place in 1963, Rasta, the Rastafari movement has been facing discrimination and persecution in the Jamaican society since its inception. They were viewed as a rebellious group when the entire society was conforming to British norms and standards. So they were essentially targeted for extinction. And this man, Rudolf, um, he decided that he was going to fight back against that oppression. He was living on some properties close to Rose Hall called Flower Hill. Um, Rose Hall had originally fired him, so he was just there burning his coal because he needed income. And Rose Hall was a plantation? Not, not, not in this time. Okay. Um, yeah, where was I? Um, he was burning coal. Yeah, and uh -huh. Rose Hall called the police on him saying that the smoke was disturbing the property. Mm -hmm. When the police went there and told him that he needed to evacuate because it's private property, um, he said to them, no man owns land, everything belongs to Jack. Police really never liked that answer, so they beat him up, burnt down his crops, destroyed his house. Wow. And while he was in the hospital recovery, he vowed that he would retaliate. When he came out of that hospital, um, on what Christians knew as Good Friday, <laughs> Sorry, Friday. I shouldn't know. <laughs> no. Um, he and his friends went back to that same police officer, beat him up so badly that he was killed. Uh -oh. His colleagues retaliated, and it was a full on war between the police and the Rastafari community, wow. which further um, got out of hand with three civilians who were killed. Um, the government of Jamaica said if you were arrested, you were to be shot on site. And a gas wow. station was burned down in this incident as well. 
Wow. Yeah, so back then, if you only had a beer, they beat you, place you in a mental institution. Sometimes when they had locks, they cut it, place you in jail. Some Rastas were even hunted in their own kind of colors. Okay, so the album is not going to be named Bad Friday. All right, hold on. Let me just make sure I'm shouting out some people watching from Poinciana, Florida, Neville Vibes. Thank you for watching. I hope you're sharing this information because it's awesome. Um, Brenda Morris, hello to you. Kay Henry, um, watching from New York. Thank you for joining us. Um, Kings of King of Kings. Um, I don't know if it's from the Bible or what, but we need to do some research into that because that is that's a that's a point that I still would love to have more information on. There's not a museum big enough to hold Black history. Um, I don't think this is about Black history. I think this is specifically about Rastafari as a movement and a liberty. And so you definitely do want to come down and see this. Is this traveling? Is this a traveling exhibition? As in, do we as go a, other places? Yes. Um, no, we have been, this exhibit has been here since 2019. Yeah. Very so nice. This, this exact one has been here for that many years? Yeah. I think this would be I think nice. It's time to travel. Yeah, yeah let's, let's bring it, let's bring it to bring South Florida. <laughs> yeah, we actually have a perfect place to travel to. But this, this, um, the colored ones were from the Smith. Because that was where the first Rastafari is. Nice, nice. Wow. Okay, Brenda Morris, I don't know if you're saying true that, um, oh yeah, true that, that the, the black history can't be held inside of one um, space, or true that this exhibit should be moved somewhere else so that everybody can see it. Um, hello from Georgia. Thank you, Tony. Um, Toronto in the house and Karen Daly. Yeah, man. All right, so we're still looking at the Rastafari exhibit. I'm just going to say hi. You should bring it to New York City. Um, I'm just going to say hi to you guys again. So it's me and Nika Lieb and Sexy Man down here in Jamaica at the National uh, Gallery. National Museum West, my apologies. So we're here still with Monique. Still in the background, that's Monique. All right. <laughs> we're still here with Zoe. All right, and we are... Um, we're just taking a tour through um, what what is called National Museum West, National Gallery West, and this this building is called the Civic, Civic Center. the Civic Shop Center of Montego Bay. Bay. So if you're just joining us, um, if you want to come to Mo Bay and see this, see the sculpture gallery that we just came from upstairs, which is going to be moved shortly, and then something else is coming in. What, do you know what that is? That will be featuring emerging artists from the Western end. Okay. All right, so the Negril and the Mobe and, and those artists, not the Kingston people. Kingston stay over where you're there, right? Um, Trilani, Falmas. Trilani, Falmas, whatever David is saying. I don't remember my Jamaican geography, sorry guys. Um, but yes, Kay, Kay Booth Wilson wants you to bring the exhibit to New York. Kaleeb and David would like for you to bring it to South Florida. We would bring it to South Florida. Let's bring it to South Florida, let's do it, all right. Right, done it. I do not. <laughs> So guys, I'm not going to litigate the King of Kings thing here because we don't have all the answers. If somebody would like to do some research and we can get you on a live or something like that so we can talk about the King of Kings thing, let's go ahead and do it. Traveling mercies, thank you so much. All right, so I'm going to flip the camera back around so we can finish this tour with the very knowledgeable Zoe. And I do want to look at this Rastafari Royal Creed Prince. Yeah, so the, um, Rastafari community have three main divisions along with some other smaller um, divisions which are called mansions mm -hmm. um, because in the Bible it says in my father's house there are many mansions. Yes. So the three main divisions are um, the Baba Shanti mansion, the Naya Bingi mansion and the 12 tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. So this is the Rastafari creed based on the Naya Bingi mansion. Mm -hmm. So this is part of the Bible which emerged the place God is highly blessed and use their dialect instead of to just generally make it. I want to read this because I'm so fascinated with it, all right? The Rastafari Royal Creed, silent sunset. Rastafari Royal Creed. Princes and princesses must trod out of Egypt. Ethiopians now stretch forth their hands to Haile Selassie, Ja Rastafari, O Haile Selassie of Ethiopia. I and I, what is this? I, Vine Majesty, 
Thy eye is coming to I dwell in the part. Thy eye is coming to I to dwell in the parts of righteousness. Lead I and I, help I and I to forgive, that I and I must be forgiven. Teach I and I love, loyalty on earth as it is in Zion. Endow I and I with thy wise mind, knowledge, and understanding to do thy will. So this is actually the, the Lord's Prayer, we would say in Christianity, but they have um, they have translated it into the dialect of Rastafari. I love this. Okay, so if you want to read the whole thing, I'm just going to very slowly pan down. You can pause, pause, and read the whole thing, but... This is when I and I enemies are past and decayed in the depths of the sea. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. But that just sounds very gruesome and, and um, yeah, I won't get into that. Sounds very Old Testament. All right, as we move on. So this is an early Rastafari, right, Ella? Yes. This is how they dressed way back then. They never wore clothes because clothes came from Europe oh, and that was their rebellion. So, oh, it's so a Rastaman really used to wear crocus bag. I used to hear that. I used to hear that, but I'm seeing it you know, right you, now. You, they say that. you always have some truth to rumors. Wow. The things on his back could be all of his possessions because they weren't materialistic back yeah. then. Mm. They believed in the simple life. Yeah. Even his name, Cling Cling. They don't have a first and last name system because mm -hmm. the slave masters gave us names. Wow. So when most of them went into the movement, they would rename themselves. Mm -hmm. And he chose Cling Cling. Right. Very nice. Okay. This is a depiction of when the Italians went into Ethiopia to colonize it, but the Ethiopian freedom fighters fought back. And because of that, Ethiopia is one of the countries that has never been colonized. Okay. It is said to be the only African country that has never been colonized. Wow. Um, Tony, you're asking if this is on the list of activities and tours and excursions. Um, I'm not sure which list you are referring to, but it's called National Gallery West. If you would like to come, and um and just see what's going on in here just look it up ask your hotel tour guides or whoever um to take you there and i'm sure it is open for the public seven days a week no we are closed on mondays closed on mondays okay six days a week except mondays so this is Haile Selassie who the entire movement is based on mm -hmm. before he became king of peace and took the name Haile Selassie he was known as Safari Makone. Mm. But when he was just 14 years old, he was elevated to the title Ras, meaning you. So the title he was given, Ras, with his first name, Safari, Ras, Safari. Gotcha. So this is the revelation of Rastafari. If you want again, if you want to read all the details of this, you're gonna to have to come down here, but we're giving you the big overview. Okay. <laughs> For secret, I'm planning my trip. Yeah, man. Plan your trip, Tony. <laughs> yes. So, going back to Paragon's incident, this is the gas station that was burned down. This is the police beating a man with a beard for allegedly being a head wow. This is the crowd gathered outside the police station where they hunted and took over 150 rascals. And this is the police again beating a man for being a that's awful. And this was what then Prime Minister Alexander Bustamante said, bringing all Rastafarians, if the jail can't hold them, we will send them to Bog Hill. Bog Hill was a cemetery at that time. Wow. Wow. Alright, so Alexander Bustamante seems to have had a vendetta against... Um, you know, a lot of us don't know the details of the history uh, and, the details of, and the history of all of our um, former Prime Ministers and so forth. Um, you hear their national heroes and what have you, but you don't necessarily hear about some of the rough things that happen. Um, we're just learning that Alexander Bustamante decreed basically that every, every Rasta, because of an altercation that happened between some Rastas and some police, every Rasta should be basically exterminated or incarcerated. Um, that's not cool. So learn up the history. We're learning some things today that are not particularly delightful about our Jamaican history. Um, here's Rasa again, Rastafari again. And what else are we learning? So over here, when Haile Selassie came here in 1963, his coming was one of the biggest receptions of anyone who has ever come to the island. People came from the 14 parishes to see this man who they thought was a true individual without anybody. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know that he had such a big following here. And when the authorities went to him and told him, you are not the Rastafarian stuff, worshiping him, he 
We're learning some things today, and it's. I'm gonna leave it at interesting. I'm gonna leave it at the word interesting, because what the thing is that whether you're Christian, whether you're Rasta, you have a belief in a system or a deity or a Messiah. For Christianity, that Messiah is Jesus Christ. For um, Rastas, that that you know Messiah is Haile Selassie, and. Whether you agree, whether you disagree, people have their rights to their beliefs. Um, I, I don't know that anybody should ever be beaten down and, and murdered for their belief system and what have you. So, Sharon Burnett, you're just tuning in. We just heard some rough stuff about Alexander Bustamante and the Rastafari movement. Um, and we are at the National Gallery West. National Museum West is the section that we're in now. This Rastafari exhibit has been um, here since 2010, 2010, eight years basically since the since the museum opened, um, and this is the museum on the west side of the island. Um, you have a number of videos that are showing inside of the space as well. Talk about the videos for a second. Well, the videos are just the projectors, you know, just creating ambience for the space. Mm -hmm. So some of them are music, some are documentary. Some are music, some are documentary. Threaded my documentaries. Okay. Uh -huh. um, but as you see, we have the money, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, if a guest comes and says he wants to hear one of them, we can easily take it off. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. All right, so you've been with the exhibit how long yourself? Two years. Two years. Okay, and did you know all of this about Rastafari before you what? got here? Uh -huh. Did I have? Learned some and I researched some. And what's the most interesting thing about leading the tour um, that you've experienced so far? Well, the most interesting thing are the kids that mm -hmm. come on school tours because they have uh, some of the darnest things to say mm -hmm. about the movement. Right. Um, even the other day, um, I asked one who um, is a Rastafari. And the lady upstairs was just funny. <laughs> so that was, you know, uh -huh. they always keep me entertained when they come. Okay. And what's the most fascinating thing about Rastafari that you've learned? Um, it is uh, tough to say because I didn't know a lot of things before I actually came here. Because I didn't know the, the Rastafari and the Rastafari and the thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know the, the Bustamante thing either. Right. Was, Kind of shocking. Right. Um, yeah, so you have elements of it which, you know, right. okay. as I go along. Alright, Tony Benzino is saying that is true, no man should be beaten for their religious belief, but during the years many have been beaten for their relief. Um, yes, this is true, and the more you educate yourself is the more that you, you gain tolerance, I believe, so we really should spend time learning about each other. I'm going to take you taking me. <laughs> uh, we really should spend time learning about each other's religions and learning how to tolerate and accept each other for who we are. Um, I th so, can I ask you a question? Sure. What is with the locks? Do you just love the dress? Or? Oh, you're asking me about my locks. Um, I decided I'm going to turn oh. my camera around since this is not about me. <laughs> um, so I decided many moons ago, when I was actually 14, that's 26 years ago, um, that I did not want to have my hair straightened or anything like that. And since I was a little girl, um, I, w I always wanted long hair. So there's some element of fashionism to it, right? I always wanted long hair as a child, but I didn't want long straight hair. And at some point, like I, my parents creamed my hair when I was maybe 11, mm -hmm. and I think I did it for a year, two years, and I was like, forget this, I'm not doing it anymore. Mm -hmm. And Rasta, well, dreadlocks was the thing that I wanted. That's, that's how I felt myself. Like, you know, you'll, you'll have Rastas who said that one child have locks and one child don't have locks, and why do you do that? Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, that's, that's just who the child is. They, they wanted, that's who they were, it. exactly. Um, that was me from when I was a child. I think so. So you're not Rasta. I'm not Rasta. I don't subscribe. Yeah, I, I haven't. But I still I don't eat pork. I don't 
Like there are there's certain, certain things of, of the liberty, exactly. <laughs> there are certain <laughs> elements of the liberty that I do adhere to. I'm not totally vegetarian or vegan or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's there's some practices that I adhere to. I'm not religious at all. Okay. So I'm not Christian. I'm not Rasta. I'm not Muslim. I'm not right. any of those things. Very spiritual. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah. So not all of my business <laughs> like that. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's keep walking. <laughs> Let's keep walking. Where are we going? Okay, so now we're going to an exhibit called Montego Bay to the World. And when you're here in the lobby, there's a whole bunch of stuff to do just while you're waiting to figure out what you want to look at and where you want to go. But here's the other side. Oh, air conditioning. Praise the Lord. Um, <laughs> called Montego Bay to the World. And I'm kind of watching. Can you tell me where I can view this exhibit? So Sharon Barrett is asking where we are. We are in Montego Bay. <laughs> um, um, we are actually... The per- oh, this is the permanent museum. Okay, great. Well, so the rest of our museum is not a permanent museum as well? Well, it's according to... They want to change it. Yeah. Okay. It's it's referred to as a temporary museum. Okay. But it's been there. All right. So guys, we can start scheming now how we're going to get it to the UK and to New York and to South Florida because it's temporary. They're going to move it. So, um, so here's some artifacts. And if you guys want to just go ahead and start leading the tour, so I don't take over the show again. (laughs) (laughs) So this is the Tainos, who were the very first inhabitants of the island. Um, It's a lot of information you want to... You can condense it, yeah. All right, so basically they were the first ones living here until Christopher Columbus came to the island and... I'm glad you didn't say discovered. (laughs) Yeah. I'm very careful about that. And um, decided that he was going to enslave the Taino population. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Um, Sharon, sorry about that. We are at the National Museum West slash National Gallery West slash Civic Center in Montego Bay. It's in Sh- Sam Sharp Square. So you can look them up online. If you're visiting a hotel or something in Montego Bay, you can look, um, look up. Just ask them for the National Gallery in Montego Bay, and they will show you where to go. All right. So the Spanish came and they brought livestock, sugar cane, the water wheel, and money to the island. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's original money? Yeah. If I go to Port Royal, can I dig up some of these? Just asking. I'm not sure. But you can dig. You know, mm-hmm. I don't enjoy it. So. <laughs> I'm just asking. Tony Benzino thought the Maroons were the original. Jamie, come on, Tony. No, man. It was the Tainos and the Arawaks that brought the Spanish to the island. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
But how did they separate it? So this over here, yes. this is a sugar right? Uh-huh. So they would pack the wet sugar inside after they came out of that. They would pack the wet sugar inside, yeah. Yeah, and the uh, molasses would leak out at that small hole at the oh. bottom. And then what would be the key would be the dried sugar. In blocks, right? Yeah. It was, okay, so sugar didn't used to come as free-flowing as it is now. It came in blocks. What a big spoon you have here. It's mm. a ladle, actually. A ladle, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's a replica. Oh. What were they serving? What kind of soup oh, was this? Soup for giants? For the, the, the boiling hot. Okay. It came off the top. Ah, okay. All right, so as we move on, Africans in Jamaica, what's this about? Yeah, so after the time was died out, they went into West Africa and took slaves from there to work their plantations here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the slaves they got from West Africa were totally different from the Italians, where the Italians were peaceful, the Africans fought back, they sold their weapons, they basically just defended themselves. <laughs> and because of that, the Spanish referred to them as Cimarron, meaning wild and untamed, but in Jamaica we know them as Maroons. Okay. <laughs> yes, Tony, that's where the maroons came from. <laughs> All right. So keep talking. I'm just going to show pictures while you're talking. Now. All right. So then 1655 came and then the British came to the island where they began to colonize some Spanish. And long story short, that is why we speak English now. Oh, and by the way, whereas the Spanish used to throw the molasses away, the British used the molasses to make water. I am of the um, education that the slaves actually were the ones that made the rum and the British kind of took the credit for oh, it. Oh, they took the credit yes. for it. Yes, 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 yes. That's the version I heard. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so what are these What are these things? Oh, those are artifacts that the Romans used back then. Um, their religion was similar to Romans. It's not voodoo, mm -hmm. it's similar. Um, so, that is known as a gumbe drum. They use that in their religious ceremonies. Gumbe? Gumbe. Gumbe, like gumbe, okay. Yeah. okay. So they'd use it in their religious ceremonies to um, communicate with dead spirits. They'd beat it to communicate mm -hmm. with dead spirits and send messages to the spirit world. Mm -hmm. Now, you as an outsider from not the clan could not. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> could not afford, um, they would not let you go into one of those ceremonies right. because sometimes the spirits would possess the bodies of the people. Which you hear about in Kumina and those religions still now. And Gumbe, by the way, for those of you who don't know, if you go to the Bahamas, they still have Gumbe festivals and they still use these Gumbe drums, I believe. Um, so, what's all this now? This is. Well, those are what the British used to use back then. This oh. is a wine, no, onion. This is for the top on our, wine bottle. This is for so, the top on our, um British people. So you see like the shape of it? <laughs> uh -huh. They said it has that shape. So it's not necessarily for onion wine because I don't right. know any wine that is made of onion. It's entirely possible. <laughs> so um, that was the for British people were some wine. drunken people and they make wine out of everything. Sorry, okay. <laughs> so it was for just like rum and liquor because the shape of it, mm -hmm. because they used to travel on ships back then, yes. it would be easier to, you know, stain the bottle okay oh yes because the tall bottles will fall over these ones won't ah um no i don't think this is an abeng i think an abeng is a rounder drum um sharon no this is the abeng right oh sorry this my is bad okay Which yes you're right you're right. you're right my bad box me on my face all right Sh <laughs> yes sharon you're correct this is the abeng this is so the horn that oh, made from the horn of a cow thank you so very much all right um, what's it? This looks like some torture chip. Ooh. Yeah, but well, the torture Oh my god. Oh my god. Alright, tell me how this gonna You put people in there and squeeze them to death? Well, it was used to intimidate and discourage this from running away. So, oh my god. Long story short again. Um, that is the key at the front. They would use that to gradually open it. That part would extend, expand, sorry. See those three small spikes at the bottom? Yes. The slave would be made to stand on those. Which would much sharper. Yeah. Wow. And this would be tightened. That part would come in. That mm -hmm. part would come up. And you're naked. Yes. And that hook would be hung from a tree. Sometimes it looks very similar to Rapture upstairs. Oh. The, the one, one little piece. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Most, um, most of the people, their first experience in the 
get choked up. Mm-hmm. Other people start to cry. Yeah. Okay. After the tour. Yeah. I can't imagine. I'm not going to watch any slave movies after this because I'm not very emotional in general, but this is kind of rough. This is kind of rough to imagine somebody being locked up in this and then hung from a tree. Um, that's not okay. All right, so let's go back to some lighter things. And en- en- Ina, Ena, Ina, K. McPherson, my mom gave us wet sugar with jelly coconut when we visited Sugar States in Clarendon, a favorite childhood memory. Yes, hopefully it is better than this thing that we're looking at. Let's keep it moving from there, cause, ooh, there's a bell. How about this? That was a bell. <clears throat> all right so oh this is a lot of slavery oh, okay what what are these are chains that the, 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 the okay all right you can see what they did to the people you know this stuff is serious like we don't hear you really do have to come down here and see it in reality because you 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 hear about slavery as a passing thing when you live in the u.s it's like, oh yeah, the South and the North were fighting, but black people were okay. Like they were given food and they were given work, so they weren't as lazy as you know as they are now. This is how they were kept under control with these torture devices. So you think it's simple, but it's not simple. Look at this. This is what I believe Americans use as bear traps now. Yeah, this is a man trap. This is a man trap. Most slaves ran away at night. There was no electricity back then. There was no light in the cell phone. So you step on this. That was uh, like clear. Oh. Cut your leg off and then oh, I guess it was just a lesson. Okay. So it was just a lesson. They didn't they didn't want to stop you. Um, you know, they weren't trying to capture you to bring you back anywhere. They just wanted you to die because how dare you look for freedom. Yeah, they really were wicked back then, Tony. And yeah, this is this is stuff that black children and white children and, and people especially in america need to be educated about because they're taking it now and as something very light and unimportant and it is not it so is not. in august 1 1838 yeah. we were eventually granted full emancipation yes. some slaves stayed with their plantation owners because that was the only left they knew and they feared them mm-hmm. however there was a mass exodus which is known as free villages Mm-hmm. which is land the British had abandoned when they went back to their home country shortly after we gained emancipation. Okay. When they went there, they went into banana production, so sugar production declined and banana became weaker. Okay. And on a lighter note, Jamaica had one of the very first train lines outside of Europe and North America. Mm-hmm. And it used to travel from where we are in Montego Bay, heading straight back to the other end of the island in Puerto Rico. Yeah. So behind um, you is a replica of a train line and oh. a tenant trolley that was used to service the train. Okay. So good. you'll see some items on top which were items that were donated to us by community members. Mm-hmm. So like we have iron, mm-hmm. sewing machine. Oh my gosh, is that sewing machine? Yeah, you use that. Ah. That's awesome. I don't know what these things are. But they look cool. It's a big old mortar and pestle. Yeah, for coffee and their chocolates and of course. And you see over there how we were so influenced by the British that we dressed here. Mm-hmm. Oh, even the way that we dressed. Yeah. yeah. That's British influence in the style of clothing. So in this tropical climate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well if that's if everybody's doing it, I guess it must be right. Yeah. Um, here's an old singer sewing machine. I actually remember seeing one of this in my mother and grandmother's house. Um, and as we come around the corner, who is this so, big mama shit? Um, moving into modern day Jamaica, before mm-hmm. airplanes and cruise ships became popular, this is what used to facilitate travel to and from the islands. It is what is known as a banana boat. Oh. And banana boat because back then we had a deal with the exposure of bananas to England. So the bananas would be held in the belly of the ship, passengers travel on top. Okay. Yeah. So when they talk about the banana boat people, yeah. it's the people that traveled. <laughs> um, and banana boat to get to England and America. To get to wherever their destination was. Here's some old clothing. I'm fairly certain I've seen my grand aunts wearing some of these things like they're still in style. Um, 
old china. That was the doctor's cage. So these are tourists or these are just entitled people so, who... The doctor's cave beach was a bathing club back then because it was a healing spring actually. Mm -hmm. So people used to flock to the island because of what they had heard about these cave liberties. Mm -hmm. However, it was eventually turned into a bathing club where only men were allowed to enter. Then in 1932, we had a hurricane that completely destroyed all of that. Okay. Still have a beach and five such as going on now. Gotcha. All right. But he doesn't look too happy to be there. He doesn't look too happy to have his picture taken. I don't think he signed a release form. All right. So here is um, the reggae dance hall jazz blues. This is people doing some kind of dance. I don't know what dance this is. But they look like they're having fun. And I don't know if we're here in Jamaica end up in the, in the museum. <laughs> but good for them. Oh, Air Jamaica is no more. They are history. Uh, bye, Air Jamaica. All right, and this is. This was built by a high school student for a dance project. Okay. Mm. It highlights the 14 parishes that were going. Oh. Mm. And it also has a voice trip and motion sensor. It's chassis from time to time. Where are you going? So if I press one of these, it's going to yeah, pop up? I'm telling you where. You're not telling me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All right, I'm not going to do that anymore because it's scary. Um, it's even more scary in the morning. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yes, these, okay, so if you grew up in Jamaica, you know that children who did not have um, toys from Lego and um, Tyco and whoever it is, Toys R Us would take, this, this was Toys R Us. You go down to the store and you buy a box of orange juice or fruit punch or something and you put on some little wheel on it. And this is your train or your whatever. You put a string on the front of it and that's what you pull. I don't think I can touch it, but um, that's what you pull to make your little toy truck. So American kids have nothing on us. Um, here is a Luda board. Ludi, sorry, Ludi board. <laughs> um, if you've never played this, I think British people call it Sorry. No, man, it's Sorry. There's a game in, in, in Britain called Sorry. And it's the same, it's the same principle as Ludo. But... Oh, we have to be very colorful and dynamic. So Ludi, see there, Ludi board game. <laughs> I love this. All right, and I think this looks like the end of the tour yeah. where we're seeing some bottles of, I don't know what this is. Strawberry yeah, syrup. Some old bottles. Yeah, a bottle of old white rum. Yeah, over a here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put over whites. I'm gonna come in here. Oh, when I grew up, see the buckler where it's second from the end. But that's Ryan nephew, right? That's right. Okay, Ryan yeah, nephew, it's, they're it's, still around, so. Well, not that, that, that version of Not this nephew, shape, not this old orange wine. I'd love to taste that. Anisu, I don't know these names at all. Sorry, I'm just turning around here. Here are some of the old wines and the old bottles of stuff. I'm White I'm peppermint. Have a reggae sun splash poster like how things are going so nice. <laughs> jazz and blues well, and songs. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. The poster would be nice. I know yeah. people have. Coming yes. full circle, St. James has mm -hmm. been through many changes. I, I, we have I, I looked at that. the time of the Taino. Their encounter with, with Columbus and the Spanish and the production of lard, the rise of the sugar and plantation system, the horrors of slavery, the war and the fight for freedom, the rise of the banana industry, the development of the island's tourist industry, many things have happened here. So this exhibition that we just came through was called Montego Bay to the World. And again, if you want to come down here and check it out, I'm gonna turn the camera around again. I'm gonna come back over here with Zoe and David and Monique. And it, Monique, can you come into the picture, please? <laughs> <laughs> and um, for those of you who are asking, this is, one more time, the- Montego Bay Cultural Center. Montego Bay Cultural Center. The components of it, though, are the uh, Muse National Museum West and National yeah. Gallery West. So there's art upstairs, there's history downstairs. You definitely want to come down here. I'm gonna say thanks to jamaicans.com 
for giving us the opportunity to come and see it firsthand and for giving you the opportunity to see it firsthand. Please hit the share button so that other people can see what culture is available in Jamaica. Um, thank you to you guys for hosting us and showing us around and for tolerating our foolish, well, my foolishness. Um, and we want to, thanks to the Jamaica Tourist Board because they're the ones who are also making this possible. And um, we hope that you all come down here. When you do come, let them know that you saw it on Jamaicans.com and that the people from Island Origins, Kalib and David, uh -huh, still David. Still <laughs> sexy, sexy, sexy man, still, still sexy, sexy. Um, are the ones who showed it to you. Um, and we, you know, we just encourage you to be here to show it to your friends and to bring your whole family um, when you're coming to Jamaica, not if, but when you're coming to Jamaica. And we will see you all on our next adventure, which might be tonight or mm -hmm. tomorrow. We'll see. All right. Y'all have a good day. Bye.